So across the board, one of the main healing opportunities I find in the majority of my sleep clients, my clients who are having issues falling asleep and staying asleep and wake up not feeling refreshed, is that their adrenal glands, or more specifically, their HPA access has become dysfunctional and their cortisol as a result becomes dysregulated. So if you're not familiar with the term HPA access, what it stands for is hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access. And these are glands that work together to produce cortisol as a response to either internal or external stress, whether real or perceived. So basically, whenever our body experiences a stressor, say we have a deadline, we're stuck in traffic, a bear's chasing us, our parasympathetic nervous system is activated. That's our fight or flight nervous, our fight or flight nervous system. And the HPA access then produces cortisol to give us energy to either fight or flee. And it does this by releasing sugar into our bloodstream, as well as increasing our respiratory rate. So this is actually a healthy reaction. We want our HPA access to produce cortisol when we're faced with stress. However, the problem these days is that we are faced with so many stressors. We're faced with personal stress, work stress, where their stressors are in our environment, such as pollution and pesticides, as well as in our foods. So our body is constantly dealing with stress and we get stuck in this state of chronic stress, which then overworks our glands and can cause dysfunction. So today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the four phases of HPA access dysregulation, what that means um, for your sleep and your overall health, and then give you some tips to keep that HPA access in your adrenal glands nice and healthy. So my mentor, Reed Davis, who is the founder of Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Practitioner, where I have my certification from, has identified the four stages of HPA access dysregulation and has created this really nice chart that um, plots the cortisol levels that you'll, your body will produce during each phase. So you can think of it as like a bell curve. So the beginning of the curve is homeostasis. That's where we should be, where our body's producing enough cortisol to keep us awake, but we're not under a lot of stress. So things are going well in our lives. Our, we have a good, healthy relationship. Work is going well. Our family is healthy. We have um, very, very little stress in our life. Well, as we know, that doesn't last um, for long these days. There's always something that can cause an elevated state of stress, such as losing a job, a pandemic, um, divorce, a, the death of a loved one. When we're dealing with a big stressor, what happens is we move into the acute phase, which is kind of the beginning of this bell curve and our body starts to produce elevated amounts of cortisol, which again, we want it to, to do. But what we want to happen is once the stress is behind us, we want our body to go back to homeostasis. But the problem is a lot of us stay in this elevated state for too long. And this is very, very taxing on our body. Cortisol is catabolic it breaks our body down. And when our body's producing cortisol, our body dedicates all the resources to producing cortisol because our body thinks it's a life and or death situation. So as a result, our um, reproductive system shuts down, our digestion is inhibited, our um, immune system is um, weakened, everything is going, all those resources, going to cortisol. And 
a lot of people, when they're in this elevated state, this acute phase, they feel really good because they have a lot of cortisol in their system. It's really energizing and it's also an anti-inflammatory. So you can stay in this elevated state for some time and feel pretty good. Um, however, it all depends on your genetics and what we call your vital reserve and how many resources your body has to contribute to the production of cortisol. So as our vital reserve becomes depleted, what happens is we enter what's called the compensatory phase. So instead of going back to homeostasis, like we want to, to be in, we then go on the other side of the bell curve. And although our, if you took a lab test, your cortisol levels would look sufficient and healthy, actually your body should be producing more cortisol because you still have stress. But you're producing normal levels because your HPA access has become dysregulated and your body has become depleted. It takes a lot of resources to produce cortisol. For example, pregnenolone, which is the mother hormone, which um, produces or is used to produce steroid hormones, hormones such as cortisol, progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. It um, is dedicated all to cortisol. So then your sex hormones um, become imbalanced. And so this is when people tend to start seeing symptoms when they're in this compensatory stage. They start to feel just like a little bit off. Um, they feel fatigued. They start to have sleep issues, digestive issues, and they can't figure it out because they're not quote unquote sick, but they just don't feel right. A lot of um, my clients are in this phase when they reach out to me. And if it continues and um, the stress isn't addressed, then the adrenals become completely dysfunctional and depleted. And then you enter what's called the exhaustive phase, where if you took a cortisol test, your levels would be suboptimal. And so you feel wired but tired because you don't have a lot of cortisol in your system. And instead, your body is producing adrenaline and making you feel really jittery. And of course, in this phase, you're gonna have sleep issues because adrenaline is very stimulating. And if you have a lot of it in your system, it's gonna be hard for you to fall asleep and stay asleep. And in addition, you know, your sex hormones are in balance, like we talked about before. Um, you're probably experiencing some digestive um, dysfunction because your um, body has spent so much time producing cortisol that digestion has been inhibited and your body isn't then um, absorbing all the nutrients and minerals from your food and mineral deficiencies and imbalances can cause sleep issues. Um, also, another thing that happens um, in this exhaustive phase is that you tend to get sick a lot just because your immune system is shot because your body is really trying hard to produce cortisol and shutting down your immune system in order to do so. So then you're susceptible to viruses as well as um, gut dysbiosis because our immune system is constantly fighting pathogens in our stomachs. And if it's not um, able to, to work, then the bad bacteria begins to outnumber the good bacteria. And as I talked about before in um, past vlogs, this can cause sleep issues as well. So as it goes without saying, we want you to avoid the compensatory and exhaustive phases so that you don't have sleep issues. You don't have to come and see me. If you're already having sleep issues, chances are you're probably in one of those phases, but don't worry. I'm gonna give you some tips to help you take care of your adrenals. So first and foremost, you want to manage your stress. So stress is unavoidable. Um, our lives these days um, are filled with stress but we can do things to counteract it, such as engaging in something relaxing for at least 15 minutes a day. And don't wait until bedtime. I want you to do it during the day, such as going for a walk, um, meditating, doing some deep breathing, talking to a friend or a loved one, or just laying down. 
Also, whenever you feel activated, say you start to feel your respiration pick up, your heart rate picks up, your stomach starts to grumble, I want you to take three deep breaths and make sure that when you're inhaling, you're doing it through your nose, inhaling really nice and deeply, and then your exhale is through your mouth and it's longer than your inhale. What that's gonna do, it's gonna send a signal to your central nervous system that you're safe and it's gonna put you back into a parasympathetic state and you're gonna feel nice and relaxed and your body's gonna stop producing excessive cortisol. The second thing you could do is eat an anti-inflammatory diet. Stay away from gluten, dairy, alcohol, sugar, all of these things promote inflammation. And whenever our bodies are inflamed, our bodies produce cortisol to bring down the inflammation. Thirdly, and I know I talk about this all the time, get morning sunlight. Go outside within the first 30 minutes of waking up without sunglasses for just two to 10 minutes. And the light hitting your eye, what that's gonna do, it's gonna trigger cortisol. And that's okay, we want your body to produce cortisol in the morning. That way, it starts to rebound through the rest of the day. And you're probably wondering why I haven't talked about supplements. Yes, you can take supplements to support your adrenals. However, you have to be really careful. I had one client who came to me who was taking a supplement to reduce cortisol, and she was actually in the exhaustive phase. So the supplement was making things worse. So that's why I recommend before taking any supplements that you do some functional lab testing so that you can really analyze the state of your adrenals so that you're taking the appropriate supplements. If this is something that you're interested in pursuing, I can help. As I mentioned before, I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, and I am able to order the Dutch test, which helps us to analyze the levels of cortisol that your HPA access is producing as well as the pattern because that's important too. That way we can make sure we get you on the appropriate protocol. If you want to learn more, schedule a free discovery call with me on my website, Kelly Murray Adult Sleep.